And if you haven't tuned in to our live show yet, Dr. Paul from Liberty Hill Comics, Phantom Phil from Phantom Restorations, and myself, we have a live chat. We take your questions. We answer as many as we possibly can. And we try to choose interesting topics for the evening to talk about regarding comic conservation, preservation, and restoration. So please join us. Now that the Japanese paper repairs have been done using wheat paste, the wrap was placed inside the heat press uh, to rapidly dry everything out. Now at this point we're going to go ahead and remove the Holitex. To do this we're using our nice green Teflon coated spatula and I do have a link in my description for this uh, product from Amazon. And all I'm doing is just gently kind of chiseling it in between the Holitex and the finished work and our repair areas. Now, the wheat paste does not stick to the Holitex. It kind of does with what you're seeing here, but not solidly. And that allows us to reuse the Holitex and it leaves everything intact on our paper repairs. I use this technique on pretty much all of my uh, repairs. Even with the uh, methyl cellulose, this is the same technique we use. Now on cover wrap, I like to use wheat paste due to its strength. Methyl cellulose dries a lot clearer, however it uh, doesn't have the strength that the wheat paste has. So let's go ahead and turn the cover over and we'll start working from the front side. And as you can see, it, it doesn't stick as much just around the damaged area where we have that oil base stain. And there we have it, nice and free and flat. Now I want to make sure that the page still has a little bit of what we call snap to it. It's got a nice gloss and hue to it, very natural for what it uh, was. So we see our repairs from the back side. Now you notice right here I went ahead and I didn't fill in any of the cutouts. And down here where the hole is, I cut that loose and uh, didn't use any fill in it because we don't want fill. That will pretty much guarantee a uh, purple label. We may still get a purple label out of this, but hopefully not. I think this is very much a conserved uh, book. It's got some snap left in the paper. You see where it's stiff. It doesn't wrinkle up or fold like a paper towel. And that's something that we, we want to make sure we maintain uh, so we, we get the, the correct feel for the paper. So we take the uh, the wrap and we put it in here into a uh, a tray again on top of our uh, heavily used uh, Holitex, which uh, you know I'm a big fan of, and then we'll lay a another sheet of Holitex over the top of it. Now, from here, we're going to just get the uh, the book wet, or I should say the the wrap wet. Uh, with a little bit of uh, watered down calcium hydroxide. Um, then we're going to immediately pour it off and we're, uh, we can only do our page repair with a, a, a wet wrap. So just enough to cover the book and it'll start absorbing the uh, calcium hydroxide and we'll rub it in, flip it over and go from there. Now when we're working on tear seals, you know, we don't want the tear to be, you know, or the repair to be very visible. So we generally work from the back side of the wrap itself. So we're just going to let this uptake. Uh, it doesn't uptake very quickly because there, there is some sizing left in this paper, which um, keeps it from being floppy and flimsy like a paper towel. But uh, as it soaks up, it gets, it gets wetter and wetter. And you've heard me say before, 
is wet paper is weak paper. And I credit that setting from, to Rick Morgan up there at Immaculate Comics. Uh, I won't steal it from you, Rick, but I will use it because it's a true statement. So what we're going to do is get it wet like this, and uh, it's looking really good right now. Uh, we'll drain this off, and then we'll do our repair with Japanese paper. I'm going to use a tan Japanese paper uh, with methyl cellulose. I like to use methyl cellulose um, on wraps because it's thinner, it dries absolutely transparent, and the repairs are uh, almost, almost impossible to spot. But they can be spotted. We're not trying to hide anything. And on covers, I like to use wheat paste. Okay, right, so this is looking pretty good. So this here is actually the front side of the wrap. So we're gonna we're gonna flip this over, or we're gonna work the tear seals from the other side. All right. So let me drain this off, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our wet wrap, and what we're going to do is dry it just a little bit. We still want it to be wet because it helps the uh, methyl cellulose be absorbed. So we're just going to dry it really quickly on the outer surface. This also help to be able to see the tears again, because once we do this, it's, you know, I'm 58 years old. I can't see the tears anymore, people. So, there we go. Now we know we got two repairs to do at the top of the page. So, what we're going to gently do, actually, you know what? I'm going to flip this around. It's easier for me to work out upside down because it's closer to me. So, we're upside down. I know I got my tears here. So, we're just going to gently peel this back and so I can easily spot these repairs. I'm going to see if I can illuminate them a little bit. Now they're very difficult to see because the, the paper is rebonded uh, because of the dampness. So what we're going to do is very gently lift this edge up. And I'm going to slide the spatula in there. The tear is going to become obvious in a second. There it is, right there. So I do use the numbers over here. So I know it's, there's one right at nine and a half. And I know there's another one right here. Again, we'll use the spatula to find the tears. And there's the next one right there, right at the nine. But that's okay. All right, this is our big tear we're going to do. So we're just going to seal this tear here. So we're going to use the brown methyl cellulose, or not brown um, Japanese paper, which I have here. I've already pre-torn uh, what I refer to as a tear seal piece. I'll put these between the tweezers. And we'll come right here and lay it down. I let it overhang so it's easy to, you know, when we can go to trim it. Now, I find methyl cellulose is much easier to work with, but it's not nearly as strong as wheat paste. So, that, again, that's why I like to use it on the wraps. So, all we're going to do is brush away from the middle. Okay, and as simple as that, that seal is done. So now I'm going to go ahead and roll the uh, holly tax back down. Now it's got a little lumpiness here, so here's what I do. This is a Larry technique. So I just get it wet, and I smear it around, and this gets everything smooth underneath the holly tax. It doesn't stick, even though it permeates the holly tax, it won't stick to it. 
and you saw in the previous video, we, we use the spatula to uh, chisel away and then separate the holly text and the repair is perfect underneath. Okay, so that repair is done. That's just a single tear. I couldn't find the other tear, so I believe it might be on this side. All right, so we'll peel this back again. We'll do the same process. I'm going to, again, use the spatula. I'll lift this corner, separate it like this, and I'm just going to gently run the spatula. When there's a tear right there, that's going to pop up. And I know I see, think I see that. Oh, that's the weak. That's the weak part. We saw that it's not actually torn, but it's extremely thin. It is on the verge of tearing. So hopefully we don't tear it here. Now we're okay. Let's keep running. Oh, there's the other one right there. So about eleven and three quarters. And let's just double check this one. And run this in here. Everything's looking good. Now this is looking good, looking good, looking good. Oh, there's another one right there. Okay, so 11 and, three, uh, 11 and 3 quarters right there. And one here about 9 and a quarter. So these are our two repairs. So let's go ahead and same deal. We'll take the uh, uh, tan Japanese paper. And I have it. I'll just make a nice tear here. And we're just going to lay this down on top of the, the tear. Oops, if I can see this. There we go. So I see the tear right here. We'll lay this down so it overhangs, just like the last piece. Gently put it right there. And we'll take another piece here, cover that other tear. And then when this page is dry, I'll show it to you. And the repair will still be there. You know, it's like I said, we're not trying to hide anything. This, <laughs> this book's a mess. We're just trying to make it pretty. And you'll see when the project is completed, how much better it looked than when we picked it up in Hawaii and brought it home. Won't look like a new book, uh, you know, I can't miracle that out, but it is going to look pretty good. Okay. So, again, the tear seals are done. I'll roll this back over. Just like last time, there's our repairs. We're going to, this is just water in a spray bottle. I just get it wet there. Roll this around so it mashes it into the uh, the paper itself and it makes a, a super bond. Okay, and that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dry this, take it to the press, and we'll come back to look at it. Okay, we're back with our wrap here. Um... Now, we've, this is the one we were working on just a little while ago. Uh, we're just going to trim off the uh, piece. And I'm going to use a fresh scalpel blade. Um, I try to use uh, fresh blades when doing cuts like this. So if you're using, be careful. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Actually, just spin it around this direction. 180 degrees, and what we want to do is we're going to use our spatula and separate. Oh, that one came loose already, so we just put that off to the side, and it looks like it lifted on its own, so perfect. All right, so with that, we're going to do our trim. So I, I like to use a uh, clear straight edge, which I misplaced. No, oh, it's right here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and rotate this down. And we want to make a nice, super clean cut. We don't want to remove any of the paper. Uh, just the paper repair that we did. The excess, I should say. So again, nice sharp scalpel.
That's it. So this is that one tear seal on that one page. So as you can see, it's completely sealed now. There's only a slight discoloration right here. That's because we we did use the brown tin goju. If I used white, it would stand out uh, like snow. So that's why I used the tan. So again, it's nice and repaired and nice and stiff. So this is ready to uh, be pressed for its... Uh, uh, basically, it's still got some wrinkles from being uh, doing the repairs. So what I'm going to do is this goes in the humidity chamber. Uh, it uptakes a little bit more moisture again. And then we do a hard uh, press un under pressure between uh, 11 by 17 bond paper and, you know, three sheets on either side. And that will make it absolutely smooth. Not glassy smooth, but, you know, normal paper smooth and then we'll start the reassembly process on the book okay so here we have the center wrap now this is where the staples come through and are anchored into this page this is what holds the entire book together now, this is a very delicate section uh, let's see Get some of this off here. This is a very delicate section. So we want to make sure we do our repairs. So what we're going to do is repair it from the back side. So we're going to flip this over and we're going to reinforce the staple holes, but not with just one layer, but with two layers of the Japanese paper. In case you're wondering what the Japanese paper is I'm referring to, it is called Tengujo. So, okay, so this looks good here. So what we have is a large hole here. These are That's an original staple hole there. The other original staple hole is in it. So we're going to repair this area with two layers. This is nothing here this is just the old staple hole from the fake staples uh, we're going to leave the hole there it's not structural there's a tear here so we're going to repair that and then down here we're going to reinforce the other staple holes and check this page for any other repairs prior to closing it off all right so again we'll go back to our japanese uh, paper I think I have a strip over here off to the side. I think I do not. So we're going to go ahead and when we're doing these, um, you notice I'm tearing the pieces. And the reason we want to tear it instead of cut, cutting it, because we don't want a sharp edge. We want the paper fibers to be pulled. So just like hair. So there's the first one right there. So I'm going to put this and gently right down on top of this hole here. So this will reinforce everything on the staple hole. So when we poke, you know, when we pierce the staples through, just like it was originally made, um, and we'll have a, a new layer of fiber in there to secure itself too. Again, same deal. We brush away from the middle and this helps to lock down all the fibers. Okay, but in this particular case we're going to add this second piece here right on top of the first piece. And this will make it a little bit thicker but the staple will not tear through, which is the most important thing. Okay, there's that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and tear another little strip off and we're going to seal this end. And we always leave it over hang because we know we're going to trim it off later.
Okay, there's that. Now I want to check it while I have this exposed. We're going to do it the same way we did last time. We're going to take the spatula and we're just going to gently run it up here. Anything that has a tear, it's going to immediately pop up. So this looks pretty good. Let's run it down the edge here. This looks really good. Okay, so we'll rotate this around again. And let's work on this other end, this other staple first. In case any of you are joining us late in the video, this is not a, this is just a play project. Now we're not, we're, we're, we're taking an old book that was really a mess to begin with, and we're making it readable again. And that was really the only prop, uh, purpose of this. To, it was readable before, don't get me wrong. But... It was really coming apart. We deacidified it and we did some structural repairs to the cover. And now we're on our really our final phase. The whole book, uh, all the pages were deacidified, um, which removes all the tannin, well, not all the tannins, but the really the acidic parts of the book. Uh, so it won't disintegrate anymore. Um, and it presents a lot nicer as well. We'll be able to hold it structurally and it, it, it'll, it'll just be nice. Uh, especially seeing what we, what, we, what we started with. Okay, so again, I'm just going to run this along the edge, see if any tears pop up. And there's one right there. And we just have the split down here. All right, so we'll do this again. And you notice I'm only doing a double layer on the staple holes. And that was pretty obvious why, because we want to have a nice strong base for the, for the cover to be assembled into. Let's see, let's make this a little bit thinner. Just tear it off. Then we'll lay this down. Then we'll lift up the uh, other half. So once we get all the wraps repaired, they're pressed absolutely smooth and flat, we can start the, pro the reassembly process and the book will be completely flat. We will roll a new spine into it, but we'll be rolling it in the correct fashion. Uh, as you knew, the, when we started, the, the, the roll was, was so severe in the spine it was it, it, it really wasn't even funny actually it was it was horrible so we'll get that taken care of again we want to smooth this out with our fingers work everything out that way the glue, when we do the separation uh the glue and all of the staple repairs will be nice okay let's peel back this other side we'll check this before we hit take it back off to the press Again, we're doing the same thing. Um, I'm going to look for any uh, tears or anything that are really going to affect the page, because we don't want uh, we don't want the book to continue to tear. Because it, you know, these books are you know the 1950s. This is a 1952 book, so 70 years old.
All right, so this looks really great. So now I'm just going to give it one final spray, and then we're going to dry it off, and uh, we'll see you in a minute after we get it out of the heat press. Okay, now this is the center wrap. I had to redo a couple of things. I found uh, a couple of flaws in it. So I redid the upper staple. I did use wheat paste this time because I was just concerned we didn't have enough real strength for the uh, for for this being a, a a center wrap. So this is the side I worked on. So we go ahead and separate these as usual. Again, we just kind of chisel away. Now this is wheat paste instead of methyl cellulose. There was a little bit of a hole there, which uh, once we get the staple holes inserted, I will probably section out part of it. Uh, I don't want it to be thought of as filler. Um, if I submitted this, which you know, we, you never know, we may do that just for fun, just to see what comes back. It should come back as a conserved grade with everything we did. You know, we used accepted methods of Japanese paper and and, and wheat paste, and all in all, everything looks looks pretty good. You can't see the holes because they're filled in, and this is the back side. Um, and I'll hold this up to the camera. You can see the slight discolorations. This is uh, where the original staples were. This is a stain. Uh, this book is full of stains. We don't know what they are. Then up here, uh, there's a little hole right here. And the staple holes are part of that. It's a staple hole there, and there's another staple hole there. So we'll use uh, one of the other pages as a template, and we'll go ahead and uh, uh, make new holes. And then we'll reassemble the book.